Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a remote meeting today at Sakhir Palace with the President of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. At the beginning of the meeting, His Majesty the King delivered a welcoming speech. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. It's uh, a great pleasure to have this opportunity to meet virtually with you, Mr. President, and to explore the development of relations between our two countries. We in Bahrain greatly welcome and value our ongoing political dialogue with Brazil and look forward to welcoming a Brazilian delegation for the fourth round of political consultation in Manama during 2021. Thank you, Mr. President, for taking part in the ceremony for the South America launch of the Kingdom of Bahrain declaration in Brazil. As you recognize, the declaration seeks to enhance peace between nations and peaceful coexistence between the people of all religions and beliefs based on the essential value of mutual respect to achieve peace. The Kingdom of Bahrain fully shares your interest in strengthening economic relations between the two countries. And we are keen to enhance trade and investment relations with Brazil. Given its size as the largest country in South America and one of the largest economies of the world, Bahrain continues its economic diversification and its focus on sectors such as smart production. We are committed to supporting projects that will help increase trade between Bahrain and Brazil, which amounted to $902 million in 2020, mostly in iron, steel, oil. We look forward to further growth of the trade partnership between our two countries and have directed the relevant economic bodies in Bahrain to explore trade opportunities with their counterparts in Brazil. In this context, a visit to Bahrain by a Brazilian trade delegation would be a valuable opportunity to discuss and benefit from the investment opportunity. We appreciate your efforts, Mr. President, in countering the coronavirus pandemic, which has had such a devastating impact on the global economy. And we are convinced that further increasing bilateral trade will be important to in building a strong recovery. Bahrain is greatly looking forward to the opening of the Brazilian Embassy in Manama, and we have directed the relevant authorities to facilitate and accelerate the process. As a reflection of the strength and depth of the bilateral and diplomatic relations, we are also expediting, expediting the appointment of an ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Brazil and look forward 
for the official inauguration of Bahrain Embassy in Brasilia at the earliest opportunity. Bahrain would also welcome concluding a defense cooperation agreement between our two countries to strengthen consultation on defense issues of common interest, particularly given the participation of members of the Brazilian Navy and the coalition task force based in Bahrain. It is a great pleasure to extend an invitation to you to visit Bahrain, Mr. President. You would be warmly welcome here, given Bahrain affection, appreciation for Brazil and its friendly people. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. For his part, the President of Brazil expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the meeting. He congratulated His Majesty the King on announcing the principles of Ibrahim with Israel, which is a message of peace to the world under the leadership of His Majesty the King, stressing the importance of strengthening relations between the two countries in the political, economic, industrial, agricultural and food security fields. The President of Brazil stressed that his country will send delegations to Bahrain to strengthen cooperation in all the fields, noting his aspirations to meet His Majesty the King soon and wishing for such meetings to continue. He also thanked His Majesty for his generous invitation to visit the kingdom, wishing Bahrain and his people continued success and prosperity. Present were the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. The cabinet welcomed the recent bilateral talks held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Serbia Alexander Vucic, including their role in further enhancing joint cooperation and coordination across areas of shared interest. The cabinet commended the positive outcomes of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's meeting with the Crown Prince Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud during his visit to Saudi Arabia. The cabinet further commended broad and ongoing coordination and cooperation with the United Arab Emirates, including joint efforts to combat COVID-19 and collaboration within phase three clinical trials. The cabinet noted China's role alongside others in supporting international vaccination efforts. The cabinet further reviewed the kingdom's ongoing national vaccination campaign, noting the arrival of a large number of vaccines in March for use in protecting the kingdom's population. The cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting and outlined the following outcomes. First, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding changes to the patent system for the GCC countries adopting at a recent Gulf Cooperation Council summit. The system aims to develop legislation and a unified legal framework within the patent system. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU on political consultations between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Serbia, which aims to strengthen bilateral relations across political, economic, cultural and scientific fields and other areas of common interest. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance amending the Future Generations Reserve Law by increasing investment in the Future Generations Fund from sales of crude oil exports outside Bahrain. A memorandum by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications regarding taxi licenses and the reissuance of licenses cancelled throughout 2020 to support citizens in light of the exceptional circumstances presented by COVID-19. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Second, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. 
A report on the operations of the tender and auction board for the year 2020, which showed an increase in the rate of public tenders to 74%, reflecting greater efficiency transparency. National Guard President General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa received the Chief of Naval Staff of Pakistan Navy Admiral Mohammed Amjad Khan Niazi. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa praised the high level reached by the prospects of cooperation and the exchange of experience between the two sides, stressing the continuation of efforts towards strengthening these relations. The meeting discussed of a number of topics of common interest as well as ways to develop levels of military cooperation and coordination between the National Guard and the Naval Forces of Pakistan. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the victory of the Spanish Football Club of Cordoba over El Ejido on the, in the Segunda Division B of the Spanish League. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his happiness for Cordoba's victory over El Ejido 1-0, indicating that this victory gives the team a great incentive to continue achieving positive results and confirming the club's position in the league in order to achieve the desired goals. His Highness explains that the Cordoba team is moving or according to the club's vision and has many challenges ahead of it in the coming period. He wished every success to the Cordoba team in the next round of the Spanish League against Real Betis B team. The Cordoba team reached 27 points, only three points behind the leader. Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received at the BDF General Command, the Chief of Naval Staff of the Pakistan Navy, Admiral Mohammed Amjad Khan and Niazi, and his accompanying delegation. Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dia bin Sagr Al Naimi were present. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Pakistani delegation, stressing the depth of the distinguished Bahraini-Pakistani relations and praising the steady progress of bilateral military and defense fields. The Minister of Information Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi affirmed that the television program broadcasted by Al Jazeera Channel contradicts with the principle of Al Ula Declaration, which the Qatari Minister of Foreign Affairs has announced following the GCC summit, which stipulates the non interference in the inter internal affairs and sovereignty of the Council's members, security, cooperation, and combating terrorism and terrorist organizations. In a special statement to the new center, the Information Minister reiterated that all the region's people including Qatari citizens, have wondered about the timing and aim of the program. He added that the answer to the question does not lie with an employee who was directed to broadcast the program, but rather the sponsors of this channel. Arumehi underscored the supportive response against this offensive program through a unified national stance in rejection of such insults, starting with the legislative authority represented by Shura and Representatives Council members, in addition to civil societies including Bahrain Journalists Association and other organizations, as well as journalists and social media activists. The minister also hailed the stance of the people of the GCC in denouncing the program. Armehi stated that the Qatari Al Jazeera channel has become a burden on the Qatari citizens rather than an investment, affirming that the channel has led to the withdrawal of ambassadors and demotion of political representation in over 18 countries around the world because of the media policies adopted over the past years. 
leaders. Armehe emphasized that such policies do not qualify as freedom of speech because they require precision, objectivity, and neutralism, which are principles the Qatari Al Jazeera does not believe in. Armehe concluded by saying that Bahrain is a state of institutions and law and is known for its commitment to all the agreements and conventions signed with the GCC and the world because adherence to conventions is a qu quite essential to the kingdom. He stated that a number of measures have been taken, including the issuance of an official protest note from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain, in addition to communications with the members of the GCC Council to promptly resolve the issue. He added that when requesting bilateral meetings with Qatar, Bahrain was well aware that resolving outstanding conflicts requires honesty, courage and disclosure. Armehi stressed that the need for everyone to adhere to the responsibilities towers the GCC system, which the kingdom always adheres to, being the unified system to achieve the aspirations of the people of the Gulf and progress and prosperity. The Health Minister Faiq Abid Saeed al Saleh participated in the 54th session of the Council of Arab Health Ministers, which was held virtually with the participation of all Arab delegations from member states. The minister referred to the great responsibility towers, the importance of health security and response efforts to combat disease outbreaks, indicating during her presidency of the previous session and with the support of the Technical Secretariat of the Council seeking to intensify the follow-up efforts of the implementation of the decisions issued by the Council, especially those related to confronting COVID-19 pandemic. She stressed the importance of focusing on overcoming obstacle lessons that Arab countries face in managing this pandemic and the importance of promoting sustainable health systems in Arab countries by focusing on developing medical scientific research systems in general and epidemiological in particular. Besides developing capabilities of Arab countries in the field of manufacturing medicines, vaccines and medical and preventative equipment. The meeting discussed and approved 20 aspects including the implications of the new coronavirus pandemic on the Arab region in the health field, Arab-Chinese cooperation in the health field as well as Arab-American cooperation to confront the pandemic. The Kingdom of Bahrain condemned the Iran-backed Houthi militia's launch of an explosive-laden drone today towers Khamis Mashaykh in Saudi Arabia in a cowardly terrorist act that targets safe civilians and violates international humanitarian law. The Foreign Affairs Ministry stressed Bahrain's solidarity with Saudi Arabia and all the measures it takes to protect its security and territorial integrity. The ministry called upon the international community and the United Nations to condemn the continuous Houthi attacks on cities, facilities and safe civilians in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Kingdom of Bahrain takes pride in its friendly and outstanding relations with countries around the world based on mutual respect and interest. In a recent published interview, the Korean ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Mr. Hai Kwan Shung, reflected his country's keenness to further bolster relations with Bahrain in all fields. For more on this, we are joined on the phone by the Korean ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Mr. Hai Kwan Shung. Welcome to the news, Your Excellency. Yes, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, good evening, everybody. Your Excellency, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Korea enjoy excellent relations in various fields. Can you tell us more about that, please? Yes, uh, we have established uh, diplomatic ties in 1976. This year marks the 45th anniversary. If I define our relationship in two terms, it will be gateway and partnership. Gateway and partnership. Korea has chosen Bahrain as a gateway to the Middle East region since the early stage of our relationship. Most of the Korean people and companies heading for the region first stopped by Bahrain. Naturally, the first Korean airline flight to the region is between Seoul and Manama. I believe the gateway function and value still goes, although it becomes lessened because of the rise of some regional rivals. And I believe to Bahrain, Korea is also well positioned as a gateway to the East Asia. And at the same time, both countries have groomed a special partnership in various areas, as you mentioned. One testimony of the, one testimony of the, this partnership is a recent high level visit. Last December, Korean minister, uh, foreign minister of Korea came to Manama to participate in Manama dialogue. And recently, 
Korean National Assembly speaker has made a historical visit to Bahrain this February. This visit also showed the trust and partnership between our two countries. The economic relations is the much heavier weighted in the field of cooperation. We have the health sector's partnership with the Sehati uh, application. It's a health insurance program. In the trade and environmental sectors, we exchange foreign gatherings annually. Also, as you may know, many Korean companies have participated and contributed to the Bahrain infrastructure and energy side. Lastly, in the field of culture, many Korean performing groups, traditional or modern, visited the Kingdom of Bahrain and the embassy also gladly holds annual Korean Film Festival. Last year, we did it in Bahrain Drive-In Cinema with the Oscar winner movie, Parasite. And not to, not to forget, Bahrain International Channel broadcasted the Korean drama Love in the Moonlight in 2019. Thank you. That is great, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much for that uh, very covering answer. That was the Korean Ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Mr. Hei Kwang Chung. Thank you very much for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 337,016 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 214,181 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,150 with 696 recoveries and 597 registered new cases. 224 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 349 are contacts of active cases and 24 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.